From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Welcome to Jack Pan Impey Presents. One of our board members was in Toronto. They witnessed the first headline that I'm going to give to you. Toronto locks down for G20 summit. Also, the CIA chief warns that Iran could have nukes ready. And Times Square plotter says it's a war. It's a war. Those are his exact words. We're going to delve very deeply into those headlines and so very, very much more. But before we get into the headlines, I couldn't help but just want to share this cartoon that Jack gave to me. It really brought a smile to my face and I think you'll get a chuckle out of it also. She's saying, if you don't stop talking about your first wife, I'm going to start talking about my next husband. <laughs> 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 oh, that's good. <laughs> I like that, Jack. You always got a good joke for us. And talking about marriage, I heard about this man who was about to get married, so he went to the minister and said, I'll give you this $100 above what I'm going to pay you for the ceremony if you will leave out that part about loving and cherishing and forsaking all others till death do us part. And they said, well, I'll think about it. But he took the $100 and says, I'll hold it until... I've made up my mind. Well, the big day came, and the minister came to that part where he looked at the groom, and he said, Sir, will you love, honor, and obey this lady until death do you part? Will you clean the house with her? And will you not only forsake all others, but will you never again look at another woman until God calls you out of this life? And man, he was frustrated. He said, <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh. I do. <laughs> well, he saw the minister after. He said, why did you do that to me? He said, sir, here's your $100 back. Your wife gave me 200 <laughs> to say what I said for you. <laughs> oh, oh, A very smart lady, don't you agree? <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, well, we'll get into our program right now. And, you know, I want us to keep the people down in the Gulf Coast in our prayers. They need it so much. On top of the oil disaster in the Gulf, the hurricane season has already started, and what a, a tremendous beginning it's had as they predicted. They did predict it's going to be very, very strong this year. Alex Spins to Category 2, another hurricane, has been very strong early in June. As they said, tourism could be damaged for years as I mentioned, keep these people in your prayers and may our government help them to get out of this situation in a hurry. It's gone on too long. Toronto locks down for G20 summit. There we have it. I mentioned that up front. And protests rocked Toronto despite security. Oh, my, oh, my. There were nearly 600 arrested. 600. Obama and the fiscal road to hell. Now the G20 leaders don't agree with the president that more spending will revive the economy, nor do most Americans. And here's somebody who disagrees with him. Merkel of Germany rejects Obama's call to spend. She said, no, we will find another way. And USA Today, European nations show way toward fiscal responsibility. There we have it. And U.S. jobs picture darkens. And the payrolls shrink for the first time. It's going down, down, down. National Review, $130 trillion 
what we, oh, and look who's holding his head, the little children. They are going to have to pay for this, $130 trillion. All right, here is the cartoonist. They always enter in into what's going on, and our president speaks. These poll numbers look pretty good. Well, that's the public's anger level. Wow. Anger level. Well, I think that's pretty expressive, don't you? Let's back up. Please keep those people in your prayers and oh, ask God to work out a solution as to how the government can help them get back on their feet. They need our help. The oil spill and the hurricane that just happened down there, the combination of both. Jack, can you put them both together for us from the Bible? 2 Timothy 3, one. This know also that in the last day, perilous, dangerous times shall come. Now, after we are raptured, after hearing the come up hither, Revelation 4.1, and we sweep through the heavenlies in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15.52, 21 judgments come upon the earth. But praise God, we are gone. And you find those in Revelation chapter 6 to 18, and one of them is something happening in the sea whereby a fire is created and it destroys one third of sea life. That's exactly what Revelation chapter 8, verse 8 says will happen. But it gets worse in Revelation 16, 3, where it says every living creature in the sea died. And they tell us through this, plus 415 dead zones. And some of those are 15 miles long, five miles wide, and three feet thick. It could destroy all sea life. Hey, Revelation 16, 3, every living creature in the sea died. They're already predicting these things are going to come without knowing what the Bible has to say about it. Mm. And then, of course, this thing in the G20. Folks, there's a dissatisfaction in the European Union now, which I believe will evolve into the new world order. And they're really upset about the financial system. And here is our president talking about just spending. Use it as fast as you can. But... Five of the major nations says, that's the wrong way to go. We're not going to do it. We don't want to bankrupt our nation. But our president was adamant. He would not change his mind. And you know, that's a picture of the Bible again. In James chapter 5, verses 1 to 4, it says, Go to now, you rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. They're wailing. Why? Because in verse 4, they've heaped great treasures together, and now they're losing it all. And Revelation 18, verse 17, pictures why. In one hour, so great riches has come to naught. And what's going to come through all of this financial trouble is what's been planned at the Bilderberg meeting to microchip every human being according to Revelation chapters 13, verses 16 to 18. He causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in the right hand or forehead that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the number of his name. And here is wisdom, let him that understanding count the number of this one, this world dictator. And the number is 603 score and six, 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 six. We are headed for that hour. But remember again, when it comes, we've been evacuated. Mm, you know, Jack, I'll tell you what, they spent a billion dollars in Toronto to protect yeah. the G20. Yeah, I think good. that shows- 600 so arrested. Yeah, public level of anger and there. We had 20,000 socialists meeting here and oh, believe me, we could have had a horrendous riot, but we were able to keep it under control. Yes, in Detroit. Well, let's go on here with Iran. Oh, we're all so concerned about what's going on there. They now have enough low enriched uranium to make nuclear weapons. Take a look at this. CIA chief warns Iran could have nukes ready by 2012. That's right around the corner. Leadership switch comes at critical time in war effort. All right, let's go on. The president versus the general. We all know what happened to General Standing McChrystal. The president met with him. He did resign. It was very, very sad to see that happen. Going on, can we win in Afghanistan? Only if the military and civilian leadership start acting like they're fighting under the same flag. Can we win there? And then again, U.S. charges 11 in Russian spy case. We will talk about that one. And to admit 
Russian identities, espionage is back on the front burner. There we see it. And Putin rips Russian spy bust. He has something very serious to say about that, and it did result in something we'll talk about in a moment. But how serious is this problem of Iran having enough uranium to have nuclear weapons? Yeah, and remember that the Mayan calendar, as promoted on the History Channel, said could be the final day in history according to the Mayan calendars. Well, here is Iran that will have the atomic bomb, and believe me, when they have it, they're going to use it. The world's going to suffer under this little maniac. And I'll tell you why, because he is promoting the fact that his Messiah, Mukti, is coming. But Mukti will not come until Ahmadinejad rids the world of the Jewish population. So a great turmoil is going to come in the Middle East and very, very soon. But let me say something about this 2012 date. It is not the end of the world. It cannot happen because 120 times this book says the world will never end. And that's why Isaiah 45, 17 and Ephesians 3, 21 both end with world without end. Amen, amen. The world abides forever, Ecclesiastes 1, 4. Yahweh God laid the foundation of the earth that shall never, never be removed. Psalm 104, verse 5. That's good news. But we're in for real trouble. His Mahdi is coming. And he has to get rid of the Jews. And the Bible teaches it's going to be a horrendous time for Israel. Alas, for that day is great so that none is like it. It's time of Jacob's trouble. And Jacob changed his name to Israel in 2 Kings 17, 34. Jesus is speaking about this time and said in Matthew 24, 21, For then shall be great tribulation such as never was since the beginning of the world to this time, no nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, my people, the Jews, there's going to be trouble. Now, Jesus predicted this. He said in Matthew 24, verse 9, to his people, the Jews, Ah, oh, he said, you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. It will come to pass that they hate you so much that anyone who kills you will think he's doing his God a favor. And that's John 16, verse 2. Great persecution is predicted in Revelation 12, 13 for the Jewish people. But he's going to lose now, while 1 Chronicles 21.1 tells us that Satan has always stood against Israel because he hates the Jew, because God so loves the Jew, Deuteronomy 7, verses 7 and 8, Ahmadinejad, though he will attempt to fulfill Psalm 83.4, let us cast Israel off from being a nation that their name be no more in remembrance, will fail because Yahweh God in heaven loves the people of Israel. He chose his son to be born among them. And he says in Isaiah 56, verse 5, I will give Israel an everlasting aim. Amen and amen. Mm. Well, you know, Jack, in just a moment, we'll deal with that Russian 11 spies that were just arrested here in the United States, never imagined we'd have a spy in America to do. We are going to be offering you a very, very wonderful offer uh, entitled Socialism Exposed. Take a look, please, as to what is really on this DVD. I really want you to have it, friends, more than anything that I've offered in a long time. Socialism exposed. America's infatuation with socialism is dangerous. In a socialist state, the government controls everything. Personal freedoms are surrendered, family values decimated, and your faith could even be forced underground. Yet young people are demanding socialism replace capitalism. Socialism is the transition point between capitalism and godless communism, and it is coming. Dr. Jack Vanapi foresaw the new rise of socialism and wanted you to know that not only does socialism spell disaster for America, it is also a sign of the latter days. He left instructions and video teaching for the creation of the shocking Socialism Exposed TV special now available on DVD. This uncut and unedited version contains significant new material we weren't allowed to air on TV. It's critical you get this information and share with friends, family, and your church. Socialism is an unbiblical system 
that leads to the rise of the Antichrist and the one world government predicted in Bible prophecy. Get socialism exposed now. Call 1-800-JVI-7777 or go to jvim.com now to order your video. Featuring Drs. Jack and Rex Sullivan MP and expert Dr. Frank Wright. This video expose is vital to the future of our nation. You'll be helping us warn our beloved country and proclaim the hope of the gospel. A couple more things I want to add here, and that is on the DVD, you're going to be seeing so much more about what is happening in the world, maybe even in your family. We're going to be talking about God's remedy for our lives. And also, I'm going to be enclosing Jack's little booklet, Socialism Exposed, with your order. So please call or write to us right away, and we'll get this in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Very important, please make the call right away. And uh, here's our announcer to tell you once again how you can receive the wonderful offer of the week, Socialism Exposed. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. My friend to order Socialism Exposed. Have your credit card ready and call toll free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rex Ella. Thank you so very much, Chuck, and I do want to encourage you, make the call or write to me right away. I'll get this in the mail as soon as I hear from you, and also I'll be sending you this little booklet that Jack did, Socialism Exposed. You need to have it. All right, friends, you know, we were all shocked. Oh, I was so shocked and concerned and saddened over the Times Square bomb plot. Take a look at this man, bomber, pleads guilty in the plot. He said, I plead guilty a hundred times over. And I'll tell you why in just a moment. Times Square bomb suspect pleads guilty. Well, the next one tells you why. Times Square plotter, it's a war. He feels like he is in a war. All right, Hal Lindsey, oh my, oh my, what a, a great uh, minister he is. And Jack, a good friend of yours. Would you like to read this, please, for us? Mr. Obama's insistence upon not recognizing that we are in a life or death war with Muslim terrorism may provide the last nail in our coffin. God help us. Islam is not a peaceful religion. Political correctness is dangerous when dealing with a religion whose foundational holy book, the Quran, calls for subjecting the non-Muslim world to Allah by force. It's a war, and we better begin to believe it. Oh, yes, Jack. We're going to go on here with a couple more headlines before I ask a question. Most dangerous, a Pakistani man chants slogans during a protest in Karachi. The sign reads, Muhammad, we sacrifice our life. They do feel they're in a war. From USA Today, Pakistan convicts five U.S. Muslims. And again, coordinated attack kills dozens in Baghdad. Dozens. Again, triple suicide bombing in Pakistan kills 40. My, all of these suicide bombers. Taliban target U.S aid groups as suicide attack kills five. And once again, one of Al-Qaeda's prime targets is expected to be, whoa, the Vatican, which the terrorist organization sees as a world center of heresy. And here's something, whoa, Russia says terrorists seeking nuclear materials. Do you see who's trying to get nuclear materials? The terrorists. If they get nuclear materials, whoa. 
Now I just want to say that something did shock me. I'm going to back up here. Coordinated attack kills dozens in Baghdad. And I don't understand why in Baghdad and so many areas of the world the, the Muslims are killing each other, Jack, the Sunnis, the Shiites. Why is that, I wonder? And blowing up one another's mosque where they worship the same God, Allah. And I'll tell you, already in Iraq, 85,000 Muslims have killed one another because of two denominational labels, the Shiites and the Sunnis. And then there's bin Laden, who's a Wahhabite. And the Wahhabites say we want to get all Sunnis and Shiites killed because they're apostates of the faith. They're not genuine Muslims. It's really a mix-up. But you know, a man visited me at the hospital when I was near death, and he was a Sufi, and that is the peace-loving Muslims of the world. And a young man said to me at Kroger's, he said, our Ayman talks about your program, always tells us to watch it because you're preaching the truth. A Sufi right. Muslim. And of course, there are many moderate Muslims out there. But oh, this killing. There's something wrong going on when this happens. You know, Jesus was upset with the people of his day because of the hatred they showed. And he said, Matthew 23, 15, Oh, and you scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you can pass sea and land to make one convert. And when he's made, you make him twofold, more the child of hell than yourself. Talking to religious people. And verse 33 said, You snakes, how shall you escape the damnation of hell? Now, when 85,000 brothers in the same faith kill one another, something is wrong. Jesus didn't teach this. In John 13, 35, he said, they'll know that you're my disciples because you have love one for another. Jesus said in Luke 6, 27, love even your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. Jesus talked about love repeatedly. Love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 19, 19. Matthew 22, verse 39. In Mark chapter 12, verses 31 and 33. Luke 10, 27. Paul mentioned it in Romans, the 13th chapter, verses 9 and 10. And he defined it. He said, love works no ill, no harm to his neighbor. And by definition and context, a neighbor is anyone with whom we come into contact. Paul mentioned it again in Galatians 5, 14, James in chapter 2, verse 8. This book is full of love for others. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. Wait a minute. What religion needs now is love, sweet love. And you know, the Bible teaches that when there is no love, I don't care what denomination you're in. I don't care what religion it is. If you don't love, you're lost forever and ever. You're not, never going to see God or the inside of heaven. What? 1 John 2, verses 9 to 11, He that saith he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness, even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. There is none occasion of stumbling in him. 1 John 3, 10, And this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Who's who? Whosoever loveth not his brother is not of God. In 1 John 3, 14, he says, We know we've passed from death unto life. Why? Because we love our brothers and sisters in Christ. Verse 15, Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. What? Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. I repeat, and no murder has eternal life abiding in him. 1 John 4, verses 7 and 8, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. If we say that we love God and hate our brother, we are liars. 1 John 4, 20. If you want to see the inside of heaven, you better start loving people in your own denomination, not killing one another, 85,000 killing one another, as Shiites and Sunnis in Iraq, plus all of the bombings, plus 1,300 attacks of nations killing Muslims in all these countries, over 25 of them. God, God, help us to have an old-fashioned touch from heaven in our souls to change us. Well, you know, Jack, there certainly is a lack of love toward the Jews these days. Is anti-Semitism on the rise? Growth in anti-Semitism across the globe raises fear. 
revolutionary anti-Semitism. Here you've got it, the Tehran Caracas nuclear access that's Iran and Venezuela very much against the Jewish people. Genocidal. Israel will be put in its place, and that is the President Chavez speaking. And here you see Benjamin Netanyahu, of course, of Israel. He's not changed since he was last prime minister, but he remains tough and enigmatic. Will he make peace with the Palestinians? Well, Netanyahu says Jerusalem is not a settlement. It does belong to the Jewish people. Now, when he was here in the United States just a few days ago, he indicated that he does want to make peace with the Palestinians, Jack. But not including Jerusalem. Now, the Bible teaches the New World Order is coming and that the dictator of the New World Order is alive and waiting in the wings. Now, this one comes in peaceably, Daniel 11, 21, enters in peaceably, Daniel 11, 24. And he's able to make a contract of peace for seven years, Daniel 9, 27. But there's a sticky problem, and it's what Netanyahu is talking about. We will not give up Jerusalem. This is not a settlement. This is our holy city. It's as important to us Jews as Mecca is to the Muslims. Don't you understand? But our president says, who cares? I'm going to give Jerusalem to the Palestinians, to the Muslims. That is what causes World War III, Joel 3, verse 2. So here's the peace. And it lasts for 42 months, and then Russia makes a move and says, I'm going to go against them that are at peace, that are at rest. Ezekiel 38, verse 11. So, wow, the headlines are being fulfilled right before our eyes. And a great group of Islamic nations go along with Russia. And you find that in Daniel 11, 40, Isaiah 17, 1, Ezekiel 38, verses 5 to 7. And... Psalm 83, verses 5 to 7, takes in most of the Islamic world. And it's the war of the latter years and the latter days, and Russia is going to be whipped in chapter 39. The Bible states in verses 1 to 2 of that chapter that five, six of their armies are going to fall. Imagine only one sixth left over from Russia and all of her allies, and it will take seven solid months just to bury the dead in verse 12. And I'm telling you, it's a wonderful thing that Jesus is going to appear at that moment and put a stop to those who are destroying the earth and destroying one another. Revelation 11, 18, to set up his kingdom on earth, peace on earth, goodwill toward men will then be a reality, not just a Christmas slogan. Oh, that's the good news, Jack. And another part of God's grace is, I love this verse, for God so loved, Jack's been talking about love, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jack, show how trust in Jesus can give us eternal life. I love 1 John 3, 16 also. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because God, God laid down his life for us. We receive what he did for you, Jesus, Savior. You died a horrible death. You shed your precious blood to wash away every sin I have ever committed. And now I lay my sin on you. I ask you to forgive me, cleanse me, save me. I pray in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, I trust you prayed that prayer. And if you did, you became God's child, forgiven of your past, ready for the future. If you're right and tell me, I prayed that prayer, open my heart to the Lord. Why? I'll send you absolutely free first steps in a new direction. There's my address. Let me hear from you, please. And friends, with all the bad news around us, I trust that you took advantage of that good news and opened your heart to the Lord. And always remember this, if you have a problem, God's help is only a prayer away. Remember that. Look forward to being your home again next week. Until then, please remember, God cares for you, and so do we, so very, very much. Bye-bye.